Alrighty guys, thanks for joining me. This is your host ID Jester. Thanks for checking out my video here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to show everyone, uh, give you guys a little bit of tutorial on using the National Pastime Next Generation electronic version and showing you guys how to set up a multi-season league for your cells and uh, kind of give you some uh, tips and tricks on how to do that for you. So obviously first thing we want to do is we are going to go to the National Pastime Next Generation website. Uh, they have been uh, updating a lot of cool things. Um, as you can see here, they're giving more managerial uh, called base dealing reports, added a low K batter ratings, and uh, basically now there is basic, intermediate, and master versions of the game, depending on uh, how uh, involved you want to get. You can see some of the uh, updates here, 2018 player cards. You can either master edition, the intermediate, or the basic. So lots of cool things coming along with this system. Uh, hopefully, if you guys haven't checked it out, you'll be able to watch it in my uh, 2017 one and done tournament, which we're trying to get a few games done on that as well. Uh, but if you scroll all the way down, uh, once you go to their website, come all the way over here to the top where it says NPNG plus miscellaneous. And when you go to the miscellaneous section, you want to scroll all the way to the very, 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 very bottom. And you can see all the different seasons that they have updated with uh, some of the new features as well uh, into their electronic uh, Excel spreadsheets. So if I want to, let's just say, download the 2018 season, um, the uh, kind of the easiest and best way to do it, I'm using Internet Explorer. Of course, you might be using a different browser or whatever, but um, if you just right click it and you say save target as save target as and it'll actually bring up like your um, your you know uh, save as box I guess and I'm just gonna click on desktop and I'm gonna actually create a new folder I'm just gonna call this uh, npng plus oops plus if I learn how to type that would help all right and then I'm just going to double click the folder. So I'm going to save this inside the folder. And um, whenever you do that, uh, whenever you're downloading some of the files, it doesn't actually name them. It names them by this uh, random C generator. So, of course, probably what you want to do is uh, rename it. So I want to rename it as 2018 and I can hit save. Uh, if you just end up clicking on the file, what will happen is at least in Internet Explorer, is it'll download this in your downloads folder and and you know that might be easier for you to actually um, you know you can say okay I want to save this and it'll actually download it into your downloads folder so that's an easier way to do it that's you know whatever way is easier for you but for me the, the reason I do it is because normally I'm doing multiple seasons so if I want to get the 2017 season Again, just right click, save target as, and it'll remember where I was just at. And so all I have to do is, you know, 2017, save, right click, save as, 2016, right? Right click, save as, 2015, right click, save as, 2014, uh, right click, save as, 1986. Uh, right click, save target as 1981, you know, etc., etc. 1974, 1974, and you can see all the files. If I go to my uh, desktop here, you see my folder, you got all of my different files in there. So if I want to play the 2018 season, I'm just going to double click on it and do 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 do. Uh, this will only work, I believe, I'm 99% sure this will only work in Microsoft Excel. It will not you, it will not work in any of the free, uh, like open office or anything like that. It has to be a Microsoft Excel because they're running sep special scripts that only Microsoft Excel understand. Uh, so you can see up here at the top, I'm going to enable editing. Uh, this is the box here. 
and uh, simply what we want to do here is to scroll over the right hand side and uh, you can say it you can see it says uh, uh, choose game from the dropout list All right so we can click on this and you see a little arrow pop up over here and it'll actually have which is so awesome it'll actually have every game from the 2018 regular season already programmed in for you so if we say um, we're going to play Anaheim at Oakland all you have to do is click on it it'll load the actual starting lineups for that uh, that actual game for you into the system and then all you have to do is come over here and click on start game and we're ready to now roll through this game and uh, uh, play, play it so we can see uh, Brian Dozier's up. Here's his actual playing card, as you can see here. And uh, he'll be uh, pitching today will be uh, Dylan Bundy. Here's his actual card. But again, the only thing you really need to know about in um, the pitcher's card is basically their stats here, uh, because obviously this this bottom portion of the card is just for uh, when Dylan Bundy bats, which of course he's in the American League, so he probably won't ever bat unless he plays a National League team. Uh, but you all know all that. So Brian Dozier, all we do is we say roll. It'll tell us, oh, it'll show us the result. It rolled a 14, and that shows us 30. It'll tell us the result. It's a strikeout. It's going to pop up to the catcher. And we say end at bat. And when I do that, it'll switch from zero outs to one out. Uh, if if it would have been a hit, it will show you what, what kind of running situation you have here. Uh, you can adjust the defense in or out. Um, you know, I'm just going over the kind of the just the basics. You can see it went from uh, Dozier to Maurer here. And you can also see down here under Bundy, he has faced one batter. So uh, here is the stamina of 25. So you know uh, when he's going to be tired. And we can do the same thing with the next uh, roll. It's a single to right. Uh, so you roll the 44, which is a 7. And uh, we can end the bat. And again, it'll show, okay, we got to run our first now. And uh, it brings up the next pitcher card, or the next batter card, I should say. And, of course, over here, it's, uh, sh it moves to the next player, um, which is Sano. Uh, and of course, Bundy's face two batters now. And you can go through and uh, roll, fly out, runner holds, end at bat, roll, out at first, uh, pitcher to first baseman. So that'll be the end of the inning. When I hit end at, end at bat, it will switch. And you can see it's now uh, Baltimore's turn will be at bat. Uh, it's reset it to zero outs. It'll show you the score. It'll even tell you it's now the bottom of the first inning. And of course, it'll put Jake Odoruzzi's card down here and the batter's card up here. So it basically uh, sets everything up for you um, to play whatever season file you download. But I know there's a lot of people out there that uh, like creating their own leagues and their own um you know, what if, uh, you know, kind of setups. And uh, so I'm going to show you, uh, that's what really what I wanted to show you is that portion, not this. I just wanted to kind of go over the basics of this if you've not seen this yet. Uh, this does not keep stats at all. So just keep that in mind. This is just an interface, so you don't need to print out the cards uh, or have dice uh, and you want to manage it on your computer as, a play, as opposed to playing cards and dice. Again, it doesn't keep, uh, there's no AI built into it. Um, you have to manage both teams. It doesn't keep any stats for you or anything like that. It's just a quick, easy way uh, for you to play uh, the games. All right. Uh, so I'm going to exit out of this and it'll ask me, do I want to save my changes? Uh, you know, what, if you do play a game or two and you want to save that uh, so they no longer pop up on the list, you can save the file or you can don't save the file if you don't want to save anything. So I'm just going to say, uh, no, no, I don't want to save it. We're actually going to go back to the National Pastime Next Generation Plus website. And there are instructions for the board reader that you can click on. And it'll bring up this uh, rather uh, 
helpful document, but if you're not a uh, tech wizard expertise, it'll probably be a little confusing for you to understand everything. And that's kind of why I'm doing this video is to kind of help players understand uh, what they're doing here uh, to uh, kind of help set up things for you guys, okay? So uh, if you, you can follow along in this document, then maybe you won't need this video, but it's not really, um, you know, newbie friendly, I guess is the best way to put it. All right, so um, with that said, <clears throat> let's, um, let's get rid of uh, some of this extra stuff that I don't need here. All right, uh, so what you need to do if you want to uh, cross season board reader version 4.0c, uh, this is what you're going to need to download plus any of the season files. You're going to need all the season files. So let's say you want um, you want to play the you know one of the teams from the 1970 season. So we're going to right click save as. And I'm going to save this as 1970, right? And maybe there's a team from the 1976 season. So you're going to, you know, you're going to save all your different season files like we had done before. 19, what did I say? 1976? Sure. <clears throat> maybe 1977 as well. 1977. You see, it doesn't take very long to do this. So I'm, I'm just going to grab a bunch of them here. 1978. Uh, we'll say save target is 1979 and we'll grab the 1980 season as well there we go that should be a good variety so you want to get all your season files and then you also want to uh, get your cross season board reader version for point oc right click and we're going to save target but this time we're going to call this as um, board reader all right, and I click on save. All right, so uh, once you get all your season files, whatever seasons you you know you're going to make a ten team league or twenty team league from different uh, different um, teams from different seasons, right? Uh, you want to make sure you get all your different season files. Now they don't have every single season electronic, as you can see. Uh, they do have quite a few of them, and they keep adding them, and they keep updating them, which is so super, super good. So, again, um, you know, we want to support people out there that are giving us free additions and free versions of baseball games. So, uh, definitely show some support for that. All right, so uh, if we go into our National Pastime Next Generation Plus folder, Here's our board reader. Here's all of our different season files. Again, if I just want to play the 1976 season, uh, all I have to do is download the 1976 season, double click on it, and enable my editing. And I can just start playing. I can click on this and go, okay, I'm going to play a game uh, from between Boston and Baltimore. There we are. It shows you the lineups. Uh, and you click on start game and you're ready to go and you're in there and you don't have to do anything special or fancy just to play the 1976 season or the 75 season or whatever season uh, you want. This is only for if you want to use, you know, teams from different seasons and you want to create your own special league, right? So we download this special one called Board Reader and when I open this one up, you will notice it looks way different, right? So if we go on the main page, kind of looks similar-ish, but you can see it's like things are missing, things are not looking right. What do I do? Oh my gosh, I I need to, you know, yeah, ah, you know, it's kind of like overload. You're not sure what you're doing. And so, you know, that's the kind of the purpose of this video is to show you guys what to do. So down here along the bottom, we want to go to our... Uh, we want to go to our different tabs. We actually want to go to the rosters tab. Uh, so you can see uh, there are these uh, different leagues over here, the senior league and the junior league, right? Or the junior circuit and the senior circuit, right? And so what we want to do is we want to import some of our teams into one league and some of our teams into the other league, however you want to, you know, design your special league. We'll say we're going to put five in, in uh, they call the... Uh, 
National Pastime Next Generation Plus calls the National League the Senior League or the Senior Circuit, and it calls the American League the Junior Circuit, right? Um, so we're going to take, uh, you know, we'll play, we'll get five National League teams, five American League teams, and then that'll just give you enough to show. All right. So what we do is we come over here to our file because we got to load those special teams in, right? So we're going to click on File. And it's going to ask us, where is the file? Well, for me, you know, because I did everything on my desktop, I know it's, I'm going to click on desktop. And I'm going to look for my folder, National Pastime Next Generation Plus. And there's my different season files in there. And what I want to do is maybe I'm going to take a team from 1970. So I'm going to click on my 1970 and I'm going to say, okay. And it's going to ask you, do you want to import it into the senior circuit or the junior circuit? And I'm going to click on this, and it's going to have the different teams from that senior circuit. And I can say, okay, I want the 1970 uh, San Diego Padres, right? And it'll ask you, do you want to import the uh, San Diego senior circuit? And you say, yes. It'll take a few minutes, or well, you know, not really. It'll only take about maybe 12 or 15 seconds, but... Um, eventually, it'll say imported San Diego into the senior circuit. And you can see San Diego is now located over here on the side. And maybe we want to also import, uh, I don't know, let's say Los Angeles from 1970. There we go. We can say yes. All right. And it does its little thing. And you can see it pop in over there and it says it's imported. All right. And now we're going to choose a file. And this time we're going to go to 1976 because I want to use a team from 1976 this time. And I say, you know what? I want to use the Montreal Expos. And I say yes. And again, it's going to import that stuff into the program. All right. Great. There we go. And maybe another one from that team. Uh, let's go with Philadelphia. And we'll say yes. All right, there we go. Good, good, good. All right, so, and then uh, that, that was from 1970, 1976, and maybe we want a couple teams from 1978. So we're going to click on 1978. We say OK. And this time we're going to import Atlanta. OK. Do, 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 do. And uh, here's a very special, important note. You can see it says here, after you import teams, after you import your teams, make sure the team names in each circuit are unique. For example, you cannot have two or more teams in one circuit named Houston, but you can have one team named Houston in each circuit. So you could you could upload Houston from 1970 in this side and maybe Houston 1978 over in this side. Uh, but you can't have the same team names after uh, they all have to be unique because otherwise it won't know which team you're talking about. So if I just have two Montreal teams in here, uh, you know, when I go, oh, I want to play this Montreal team, it won't know which Montreal players are on which team and stuff. So they do all have to be uh, individual. So we got Atlanta, right? And uh, let's go ahead and do... Uh, Cincinnati yeah well to Cincinnati why not from 1978 if you're not sure which which file you're using you can shows you right here and you can see it shows you the uh, 1978 we're going to do the same thing for the American League or junior circuit I guess and maybe we're going to use uh, we'll use the 1980s for that there we go so we'll use 1980 we'll say okay and we're going to do the junior circuit and we're going to import Boston. We'll say yes. And there we go. And we're also going to take uh, Milwaukee from 1980 as well. Alrighty, great. And uh, we'll click on file. We're going to go to 1981. We're going to say okay. And we're going to go and we're going to do uh, California. California. Oh, California. And we're also going to take in the New York Yankees from 1981. 
All right, and and last but not least, we're going to go to 1986, right? And we're going to import the Kansas City Royals from 1986. We're going to say okay, and we're going to take the oh, who should we take? We're going to take uh, 86, 86, 86. Hmm. Let's go with uh, let's go with Oakland. There we go. All right. So basically, you see how we done. It was only taking us a few minutes. We got our uh, San Diego. We got a six team on both uh, sides. If you wanted to go with ten on each side or twenty on each side or whatever you want to build, you can do that. Just the very same way that we've been doing it. Okay. Uh, just you're going to click on the file. You're going to bring up the uh, the different season that you had already previously downloaded. You're going to say OK, and you're going to decide if it's going to be a National League or American League, and I'll add it to that side. So, you, you know, pretty simple uh, now that you've seen it in action. Uh, what's going on with it is it's basically adding all the players and all the stats and everything. And you can see as we scroll down, here is uh, the Los Angeles team we imported. Here's the Montreal team that we imported. Here's the Philadelphia. And, of course, it has stats and stats and player ratings and all kinds of real important things that you obviously need to play the game, right? So I'm just going to scroll back up to the very top so we don't get you too confused. All right, so now if we go back to the main page, it's still, wait a minute, it's all messed up. Oh, my God, what are we going to do? Well, the reason that is is because when you're playing the other ones, it's already got games loaded in there, and we don't. We don't have any games because we haven't told Excel, we haven't told the program, hey, I want to play this team versus this team, okay? So what I have to do here is... Um, I'm actually going to get me a little helper file here, uh, hopefully uh, in a second, but we'll come back to that here in a second just to help me out. All right, so what we got to do is we actually have to tell the game who is going to be the visiting team, right? Who's going to be the visiting team? Well, I don't know who's going to be the visiting team. And we're going to come up over here, and on the very, very top right-hand side, our left-hand side over here, uh, right underneath where it says C, if you click in this yellow box, uh, the C stands for circuit. Remember how we have the senior circuit and the junior circuit, right? So it's asking you which circuit is the team going to be from, and you're going to click on it, and it's going to say senior circuit or junior circuit. So if we have a National League team, it's going to be the senior circuit. If it's an American League team, then we're going to use the junior circuit. So we're going to put just two American League teams against one another here. And we're going to say it's a junior league. All right. And then what you want to do is, um, you know, you can click off there and you can see how it put the J in there. But the next thing we want to do is tell it which team we want. So underneath where it says visiting team name, you click it. And again, a little arrow pops up. And it's all blank, and there's nothing there. And you go, well, oh, geez, I screwed that up royally. I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I should go watch ID Jester's video again, right? <laughs> well, of course, you can always come back and watch it again. But it's not actually missing, all right? If I click on this arrow again, you notice there's a bar here on the side. And this little uh, gray part of the bar is actually your scroll. And if I scroll, I can scroll it down, but I can also scroll it up and up. There we go. So you want to scroll it up until you see your team. So we're going to bring in Boston. There we are. And we're going to click on Boston. All right. So we can click back out over here. And now we have the junior team. It's Boston is going to be the visiting team. And we still got a big error message here. And oh my God, what's going on? And blah, blah, blah. Now we've got the... Uh, we got the league, we got the team. Obviously, what we don't have left is the players, right? So we're going to create a batting order for Boston from our uh, season files. So what I need to do is try to remember uh, Boston was 1980, right? Yes, I'm pretty sure Boston was 1980. So what I'm actually going to do, super cool, 
is if I go back to the National Pastime Next Generation Plus website and I scroll up uh, about halfway down the page, there are lineup sheets. All right. So I can look and click on the 1980 season or again, I can right click it and I can save target as and it's going to bring it back to my National Pastime Next Generation Plus. But you can see my folder is empty. The reason their folder is empty is this is saving it as a Acrobat document. The other files we downloaded were Excel files. So we're not going to see any anything else in there. And even though there are files, because we don't see any other Acrobat um, document in there. And now this time I'm going to save it as 1980. And I'm going to click on save. All right. So um, we're going to need 1980. We're going to need what other ones do we decide we need? We're, let's see. Uh, I think 1980, 1981, and 1986 were the three we used. But here's our 1980 Adobe file that we had downloaded that has our lineups. So I can click on that and it brings it up. And I'm just going to kind of minimize it on my screen here. Uh, and now if I scroll down, eventually, hopefully, I will get to the Junior League. And there is our lineups, our, kind of our default lineups for uh, National Pastime Next Generation 1980. And we are now looking at Boston. So the way this is separated, if you're not sure, I think if you scroll all the way to the very bottom of the document, it's going to tell you how uh, everything is set up for you um, in the document. But I'll kind of go, just go over that for you so you understand. Uh, let's see, we are looking for Boston. One more page up. There we go. All right, so under the Boston tab, so you're going to have your starting players based upon the player that played the most at that position during the season. So Burleson, he had the most at bats uh, in the shortstop and played the most the most at bats while playing at shortstop. And then Stapleton and then, you know, et cetera, et cetera, down the list. And then it uh, organizes your uh, roster based upon the most common time. Burleson was a batted first and et cetera, down the list. And, it, you know, it kind of explains it might actually uh, explain it maybe slightly better than I might have done it. All right, so the top section of players listed for each team are these players who played the most at each position for any uh, for any other player. Uh, the top section of the players list for each team are these players who played the most at each position for of any other player on the team. These players are listed in a suggested batting lineup order. The next section of names uh, for each team are the starting pitchers listed by batters faced. So again, if we scroll back up to our Boston team here. So here's, uh, you know, kind of your, your default setup or lineup for Boston in 1980. And, uh, of course, you can mix and match and choose however you want, okay? The next is going to be your five starting pitchers. So, Torres uh, pitched the most innings uh, as a starter, so he's going to get the number one. Eckersley was number two, Renko was number three, Tudor was number four, and Rainey was number five. Then, you're going to have five other players listed, and those are going to be the players that came in as relief pitchers the most uh, and I think the closer is um, listed on top and then your other relievers are listed below that all right uh, then you have other pitchers that didn't make either the list they weren't a starter or they weren't one of the top five starters and they weren't one of the top five relievers, but they have the rest of the pitchers that came in and um, uh, is that correct? Wait, 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 let me just double check that. Let me just double check. Yeah, the next section is uh, relievers. Uh, the next section 
may or not, may not exist depending on the team as several pitchers. This section is in alphabetical order, and the pitchers are labeled starter, reliever, or both. Right, there we go. So this will be, uh, if we go back to Boston here, yes. So these will be, again, the pitchers that weren't one of the top five starters or one of the top five relievers. Um, and it'll tell you that Appointe was a uh, reliever, and Billingham was both a reliever and a starter. Crawford was both, both, both. He was just a starter. And then Reimers Wald was a reliever. All right, so there you go. And then it has all the rest of your position players that played for your team and what position they played. And I, they're in alphabetic order, not by, you know, like um, most games played and then you know down to the least mount it's all by alphabetical by uh last name and then you can see what position so pappy might have played the most or sizemore might have played the most but obviously they weren't one of the nine main starters right so these are all going to be these are all your kind of your backup uh, players that you have there. So that's how that's how this uh, document is uh, separated out for you, just to kind of help you out. So we're going to actually use this sheet to set up our lineup for Boston 1980. Hopefully we have the right season file. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to try to finagle this a little bit over so I can actually have both of these sheets up at the same time. And I uh, just, I don't need all this stuff over here at this point. All right. So, I mean, you could just print this out and have it on your test table. I'm just showing you. So we're going to take uh, Burleson. We're going to put him at short. Okay. So again, ah, wait a minute. No, we don't have any players. Where'd they all go? No, no, no. Remember, you want to use your scroll bar and just scroll up. We're going to find Burleson. There he is. Boom. Done. Go to the next guy. We want Stapleton. We're going to scroll up. Stapleton RS. Stapleton. Boom. Third is going to be Lynn. Lynn. There he is. And then we want Rice. Jim. Rice. Again, just scroll up. There's Rice. And Perez. Scroll up. Perez. Perez. Is that a T Perez? It is. And we want uh, Yaz, right? We want Yaz. So we're going to scroll up to Y, wherever that is, right there. And then we want Carlton Fisk. C. Fisk. There he is. And then we want D. Evans. We're going to scroll up. Evans, D. Evans. And then we want G. Huffman. G. Huffman. Uh, G. Huffman, there we go. And so that's kind of, and, and you notice all of the information is popping in. They're hit and run, their uh, injury, their run ratings, uh, their batter ratings, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, and then we want our starting pitcher. Starting pitcher is going to be Torres. So we're going to come down to the pitcher, and it looks like we're going to put in Torres. Uh, M. Torres, there we go. All right, and boom, look, all that information pops in there for you. And now all we're going to do is we're going to do the same dang thing we just did, but I don't remember who the hell we chose from 1980. I know we chose Boston. I don't remember who the second team was. Um, obviously, that's going to be kind of important. Let's see if we can remember... Good Lord. <sighs> who is our, who is our four? Or, yeah, let's see who our teams are. Cause that might refresh my memory. Uh, oh yeah. It was, uh, it does keep them in order. We went. So it was Boston and Milwaukee, right? So we're going to have Boston play Milwaukee. They're both from the 1980s. And then we used 1981 was California and the Yankees. And then 1986 was Kansas City and Oakland. Right, 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 right. So it's going to keep them in order. And I remember we went 1980, 1981, and 1986. Right. So um, I'm not sure. Can you actually, can, can we say that this is Boston 1980? Would that, uh, oops, well, not that 1908. Ugh. Let's go 1980 there. I think we can actually 
rename it. Now, if we go over back to our main page and we go to Boston, will it? Yeah, okay, so it does switch the name. So that would that would even be helpful for you. So again, what I just did was I uh, just went in the roster and I just clicked on the Milwaukee and I'm just going to say 1980. Boom, there, right? Now, uh, when we go back to our, we're using the little tabs down at the bottom, right? So when I click on the main page, when I click on circuit over here, and I go to junior circuit, and I click over here, it should scroll up and show us Milwaukee from 1980. Boom, there we are. All right, so now all we have to do is find Milwaukee. There we are. Beautiful. This is coming along like a good plan. Always does. All right, now I'm going to click on Paul Molitor and Molitor. There we go. And Yout, right? Robin Yout and C. Cooper. Mm -mm. Scroll up. There we go. Uh, C. Cooper and G. Thomas. Scroll up. You can also click up on the top of the bar. G. Thomas. There we go. B. Aglavai, yeah, whatever the hell his name is. B. Aglavi, Aglavi. S. Lucanz, Lizan, Lucanzo, Lucanzo. Yeah, whatever. Why do people have to have names, anyways? Why can't we just go back to the good old days? Just call you Bud, Pal. Hey, dude. Davis, there we go, Gartner, oops, click on the, oops, click on the arrow, thank you, Gartner, there we are, and last but not least, see more, nope, scroll up, there we go, and you do, 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 see more, there we go, all right, and pitching is going to be Haas, again, you can, you can put in any kind of lineup you want because it's your game. It's your season. It's everything you're, you're designing. Your, uh, Haas, M. Haas. Yeah, okay. So there's all of his stuff. All right, so now we got our starting lineups in. I can kind of just minimize that other one. I just wanted to put in a decent lineup so you guys don't go, oh, what the hell? Oh, yeah, we're not done with that file yet. Why are we not done with that file yet? Well, we can't actually do anything yet. Uh, because you can see it's still an error state. The reason that it's still an error state is because we haven't assigned position to these guys. So actually what I'm going to do is bring up our file again. So Milwaukee. All right, so it's second base. So you put a uh, 2B in there, right? Because he's second base. Uh, nope, that's not how you do it. So what you actually have to do is you put in the position number. So we put a 4 in there. There we go. Yout is going to be six, and a three, and a seven, and a nine, and DH. What do we put for DH? That's a good question. I'm going to find the answer for you guys right now, because we're going to bring up the 2016 file. And I'm just going to load up a game that has the DH so I know what to put in there. Uh, oh, you just put EH. Okay, well, that makes sense. Nope. Okay, so uh, where were we? We were right here. So we're going to put in DH. There we go. And mm, third base is a five. Oh. Uh, did I miss one? Four, six. Three, yeah, I did miss one. Eight, seven, nine, DH, uh, five, and then two, right? There we go. And now we do the same, same thing for Boston here. You guys probably know uh, their positions a lot better than me. That's why I use my cheat sheet here. So that's a six and a four and an eight, and a seven, and a three, and a DH, and a two, and a nine, and a five. All right, so 
once you get done with this, okay, once you get done with this, what you want to do is you want to save this file again, but you want to save it as a new as a new file. So you can always go back to that other one you downloaded and start again. If you screw up everything, you can always start again, right? So we want to just go file. We're going to call this save as, and I'm just going to go to my desktop, and we're going to call this instead of board reader, we're going to call this IDs, J's, uh, uh, 1970-1980, wild wild league all right so i'm just going to call it that boom all right so i've got a new file created and it has all the information with all the teams in it that we put in right and it's ready to now play this game because we had set up this game and we're ready to go so we can actually hit start game, but before you do that, before you do that, seriously, what you want to do is you want to save your lineup so you don't have to do this all the time. Because if you if you look over here and click, there's no lineup saved. But the next time Boston plays a game, if you want to use this same setup, it's already been created for you, right? And you can just say, uh, just load that setup and it'll just load all those players in that order. Now I can go and I can load this and maybe Jim Rice has moved up to the fourth spot. I can change this once I load it, but it'll save you a lot of time and effort trying to do that. So what we want to do is we want to save the visitor lineup and we're going to enter a name for it. And I'm just going to call this default lineup, right? And we're going to do the same thing for the home team. Save the line home and we can say default. Okay, boom. Item save. And I'll show you why that's important because um, if I was to just, uh, uh, let's see here. We're just going to wipe it all out. Boom, it's gone, right? We're just going to wipe it all out. And uh, you can see everything's kind of gone, right? So again, I can just say, okay, I'm going to load, uh, oops, I'm going to load the junior circuit. I'm going to load Boston 1980, and I want to now load my lineup. I'm going to, first thing you got to do is click visitor lineups, and you click it. It'll now activate this box, so now when I click it, I can hit the down arrow. It'll have all your different lineups in there, right? So maybe I have one lineup for this, and then maybe another lineup I have, um, um, uh, we're going to make uh, some changes here. So we're going to we're going to put rice. Rice is going to go into the uh, four spot there. So he is a seven, right? And then instead of uh, that other guy playing, we'll just put in. Um, I don't. Uh, well, let's bring up our little cheat sheet, right? And look at our. What position are we missing? We have, uh, we're missing a center fielder, right? So we need to find a backup center fielder, which happens to be Bowens. It looks like we're bringing in Bowens, right? So we're going to bring in Bowens. There we go. And he's going to play in position number eight. And notice when I do that, it everything's okay now. All the red goes away because I have position and now I'm going to save this visitor lineup and we're going to call this one um, uh, maybe uh, this is a lineup they used uh, versus lefties first lefty all right and I can say okay so now uh, whenever I play with Boston right I can say list my lineups I click my list my lineups first then I click on this box there's our different lineups we've already got saved for you now. So you can have, you're going to have, you know, 15, 20, 30 different lineups. Uh, and then that way uh, you can just uh, load them up every time. But before you start the game, you want to save that lineup. Now, again, this doesn't have any AI. It doesn't keep stats for you. It doesn't do anything like that other than let you play the game. Uh, National Pastime Next Generation Plus on your computer. 
Uh, you'll if you want to keep stats, if if you, all you're doing is trying to get win loss records or whatever, it might be real easy. If you want to keep stats, of course, you're going to have to use a different program for that. Uh, but at least you can play the bowl game uh, this way as well. Uh, the other thing is uh, it will have, you know, like a play-by-play, -play, which is super cool. It'll actually have player all the different player cards for you. Uh, and you can actually go in and see all of them. So I can say I want to look at... Uh, the junior circuit, I want to look at um, Boston, and I want to look at player, uh, let's see, what is Crawford's card? Okay, yeah, uh, he's, he's, you know, not very good against right-handers. Uh, yeah, okay, let's look at this cup player. Uh, he's a left-hander, you know, so you can kind of, that's what the card image is. Uh, the boards tab down at the bottom has all of the what they call the the play boards which has all your different base situations and your numbers and it'll tell you the outcome of that uh, the roster tab was what we worked on to begin with here is the detailed information about the uh, you know if you roll a 13 on bob barton's card it's actually a 36 so it references that 36 not the 13. Uh, then, of course, here's your lineups that we were saving. Uh, I'm not sure if these are the ones that are, yeah, it looks like these are the ones we just created there, right? Cool. Uh, and uh, I think, is that everything? Um, the intro page kind of just talks about it. Um, and I think I think that's pretty much everything. And now all we have to do is hit, uh, oh, we got to load our, Got to load up our game again here, uh, Junior League, and we're going to choose our Milwaukee from 1980. We're going to list our home lineups, and we're going to click on Default. We're going to say Load this lineup, and then we're going to click on Start Game, and we are ready to play. Boom, just like that, and then you can play the game, uh, you know, same way. You know, uh, looks like it's going to be Jim Dwyer. Oh, wait a minute. What happened? Why is Jim Dwyer up on Burleson? Okay, so the reason this is up like that is because in our cards, uh, in our cards tab, we actually were looking at Jim Dwyer's card, so it thinks we want to use Jim Dwyer. Well, we don't want to use Jim Dwyer, right? So we just want to clear that out. We just want to clear all that out. So uh, just click on, you know, just hit the backspace button or delete them all out of there, right? And you notice it automatically switches to Rich Burleson. The reason it did that is because that's who's up to bat, is Rich Burleson, right? So the Roosters up against Mu Haas. We're going to roll them dice. Steve, right three. And we're going to end the bat. And you can see we are now playing the game, right? So if I wanted to, you know, play this game and then, you know, I finish it up, I can you know import all my stats into another program or keep track on a on a you know pen and paper or however you want to do it and then uh when we're done with it um you can load up another team you know play another you know same way you know maybe the next game we're playing is a senior circuit and again i would go and rename those files right and I would say, you know, San Diego from this, whatever season it was, Los Angeles from whatever season it was. So that way I knew, um, you know, what, what they were, you know, San Diego. Um, and I can click off of this. And, but it's going to keep all, all of the data that I had in there to begin with, right? So what we got to do is we got to just, just, Click on the space and hit and hit uh, your backspace key. It clears it all out of there, right? All right, so there's your San Diego. Now we can actually go in and, and load in the actual San Diego players, right? And I'm not going to try to create a fancy lineup because I don't know. I don't have baseball reference up. It tells me, you know, these are the players that played this day or whatever. Uh, but th that's how you would, uh, you know, start working on getting another game. Make sure you put the proper positions in there. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, and then once you get your lineup, you make sure you save the visitor lineup, make sure you name it. And uh, that way you can start playing games with your uh, functional league. So, uh, you know, the stuff I went over, most of it's in that document. It's kind of sort of explained in that document. It took me and I am pretty good with this stuff. I'm actually probably really good at this stuff. Uh, and it took me a while to try and figure it out and mostly not by reading the document, but basically just clicking around and trying to figure out what I was doing wrong and why I couldn't get things to come up and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, uh, everything you learned is from me basically m messing around with it, uh, trying to see, uh, what's going on. Wouldn't hurt you to look at the National Pakistan Next Generation Plus. Uh, look at the instructions because there's some important points in there. They're trying to get across to people. If I can close all this, there we go. Um, and, you know, it talks about the different tabs and what you can do and blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, some important information in red, okay, about your manager call base feeling if you're going to set that up, how to set that up. Uh, it looks like the season files we imported don't have that option in them yet. So it doesn't look like that's something you can do. Uh, but there's more information, blah, blah, blah. Keep scrolling down. Uh, you know, it talks about the different tabs. Most of these tabs you're not going to use. It talks about how to use the main tab page so this might be important for you because you're going to be using this quite a bit right so maybe read this section over and um, you know understand that section okay this is ultra ultra important as well because when you look at uh, the Excel file if we look at M Haas here from Milwaukee right his card states versus right-handers, he's got a 43, and versus left-handers, he's got a 15, right? So it shows the current grade in here, but sometimes they don't show the proper grade, and there's a reason for that, and that's why it kind of talks about that. The grades found in the current grades column are the ones that's used to determine whether it's a hit or an out. So you don't have to... It's, it looks at these grades as opposed to uh, not using these grades. I don't know if I explained that very well. But anyways, uh, re, you know, read through these important sections of the, um, of the rules so you understand how to operate it. Because I'm not going to be answering questions. I'm not the one that designed this. I'm not the one that developed it. I'm just the one trying to show you how you can set up your own league and maybe have some fun with it for yourselves. I'm not going to be answering questions on, well, how do I do this? How do I do that? Of it, Read the damn manual, okay? I showed you all the basics. If you have more problems, then yes, you're going to have to spend a few minutes and you're going to have to read and actually sit down and try to learn something. I know it's difficult for some people out there, hopefully not you, but uh, uh, fully functioning TBR with all of its functionality, you don't need to enter thing, anything in this cell, blah, 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 you know, uh, important information. It is kind of a longer document, but most of it you're gonna not need because a lot of it says you're not gonna have to do anything on this tab. If you're looking for something Specific, there is an index there. So if you're looking for something like, how do I change the base situation? Well, I can show you that. Uh, here is your different types of plays, right? So you can bunt for a hit because there's no one on. If there was someone on, uh, let's see if we can get someone on. Strike out, nope. Strike out, nope. Bottom of the first, strike out. Dry, line drive catch. Fly out, based on ball. So we got somebody at first. Now, if I click on type of plays, you can see there's a sacrifice or there's a hit and run option. So this is where you're going to change your uh, uh, batting, what you're going to do as the batter, right? 
And then this is what you're going to do with your defense here, uh, whether or not the defense is going to stay in or if they're going to play back, right? Uh, does auto keep score for you now? I think the document was created before. It didn't keep score. I think somewhere in the document or on the website, it actually says this does not keep score for you. I think it's actually on like the very first page or something. Uh, but it does actually keep score for you now. Uh, that was added into the game, obviously, after they created this document. Yeah, right here. You have to keep score with another product or uh, on paper yourself. It does keep score for you now. So uh, I will actually, maybe we can even show you that, right? So let's roll, roll, ball two, issue walk. Mm, uh, no, let's roll again, strike out. Okay. Roll, fly out to center. Uh, oop, oop. Roll, that's an NA result because we don't have any players in that right. All right, uh, I'll just have to throw in a few more players here. This game doesn't, it's, it's not designed to keep you from cheating. You can put the same player in all nine spots. It's your league, you do whatever you want. So, you, you know, if you wanted to, if you wanted to say, hey, um, Jim Rice, I'm going to put him in nine times, one in each different position, you can do that. Uh, so now if we actually roll, it should give us a strikeout. Okay. Strikeout. Okay. Uh, because the pitcher is not set right. That's a possibility. No, uh, let's try him. No, let's try him. All right, let's see. Roll. Single to the left. Batter to then steal second. All right, here we go. So he's on second. Give us a ah, strikeout. Oh, another runtime error. What are we doing wrong here? Hmm. Probably, uh, it's probably looking at Dave Roberts. He is a pitcher. Not sure why it. Probably got it all messed up because I've been, you know, messing around with different settings and stuff like that. If we actually uh, exit out, now nah, we're not going to save that, right? So I can always go back to my National Pastime Next Generation Plus, and I saved. Oh, I saved it right because I didn't save it to. Where did I save that actual document? Uh, the new, where did I save it? There's our board reader. Um, what I can do is just bring up Excel though. All right, and I can always go to recent documents. Here it is. Uh, desktop, oh, I saved it right to my desktop. That's why. So, Really, where is the actual file then? Right, isn't that what it said? I think it said it was desktop. Ah, uh, desktop. Yeah, should. Maybe it's on my other computer screen. Maybe, I'm not sure. Well, anyways, I can open it up. All right, so now we can actually Roll and it shouldn't give us any errors. Single to left, single to left, runner to second, out at first, two away, line drive out at third, fly out to center, home run. There we go. So now when I hit end at bat, notice it says zero zero bottom of first. I hit end at bat. Yep, there it is. Milwaukee takes a one to nothing lead on this on the solo shot. So yes, it does keep track of your. Uh, inning and your score now so anyways uh this was designed to help you all uh try to figure out how to set up your own leagues with national pastime generation plus you see when you're clicking and rolling it goes quick uh, to make substitutions it's pretty damn simple right i don't want uh, evans in anymore i'm going to replace him with so and so uh we'll say hobson right so hobson's coming in no hobson's a pitcher uh nichols is going to come in uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. 
right? But that's how you change players. Uh, change pitcher, same thing. You're going to come down here, and you're going to find your uh, player you're going to bring in. And maybe it is accuracy. I know he's a pitcher, right? And actually, if you go to your play-by-play, -play, you will notice every time you make substitutions, whether you meant to do it or not. I uh, thought it did actually show you. Oh, yeah, here's all of our replacements right here. I should show you all your replacements. Here is our home run. We just hit to right center field. There we go. And now uh, we can roll, right? Fly out to right field. And bat. Next, we're in the bottom of the first. Two balls. Roll again. Fly out to center. And bat. Next player. Single to right. All right. Next, fly out to right. Roll on roll. I mean, it does everything for you. So it's super quick, super fast. Uh, you just need to understand how to get it set up to begin with. But it gives you the option to play with the teams that you want to put to, you know, against one another from multiple different um, you know, seasons uh, and create your own special league. So I'm not going to – don't save that. There we go. Uh, so download the files you need, uh, you know, all the different season files you're going to be using. And download the board reader and then add those seasons into your board reader. Save it again. Save it as a new name. Oh, here it is right there. There's my file. Uh, save it again so that way you can always go back and start, you know, start fresh. So there you go. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty much uh, the gist of it. It's about 90 to 95% of everything you need to know. The other 10%, you can either figure out or you can read through that document. It'll help you help you along. But uh, hopefully this was helpful for you guys out there. And we'll see you all next time. So thanks so much for watching. Leave your thoughts, comments, suggestions below. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care.